Out of all the films and people that you have acted with, and I, I would love, if you don't mind, to give me a, a Gene Hackman story you might have from Crimson Tide. He turned 91 over the weekend. Do you got? Do you have a good Gene Hackman story that you can share well, that, with us? Well, that was an awesome experience, both watching Gene Hackman and Denzel Washington. Right. It was great. I, I lived near the studio where we were shooting, and I didn't work every day because <clears throat> I had like a supporting part. But on my days off, I went all the time just to watch those two go at it as as artists, as actors. It was like it was like a boxing match verbally. It was it was really cool. I learned a lot watching those guys. And and Gene, Gene Hackman was a uh, he was crusty, but he was always. <laughs> I mean, he was always on the set, always talking with the crew, always hanging out. He had a little dog, if you remember, in that movie. Um, yes, his character had a little dog on the submarine, and he was just hanging out with the dog drinking coffee with the with the grips and the people there and just hanging out he never went to his trailer and hung out whereas you know other actors often do that he was just always on the set always interested in what's happening always mentally getting ready but just relaxing and enjoying the company of people and that's that's my kind of actor i've always i think that's why i wanted to direct i've always liked the collective aspect the team aspect of making movies i always thought it was it was great to see how you could take something written down to the screen and what is that journey all these different people with different skills when it works when it's well led and people communicate well it's amazing to see what people can do they can turn a so-so script into a great movie and i've seen really great scripts turn out badly as movies because people didn't communicate in that way but tony scott was a was very good communicator that was a great crew and it was and gene hackman yeah he's just a he was a master is a master in his art form, and so he was at, at the top of his game at that time. I think I know what you mean by crusty, but what do you mean by crusty? To call him crusty, um, he didn't suffer fools. I mean, he was just—I uh, don't mean crusty old. I just no. mean he was like, you know, he was, you know, former marine and a, and a, just a just a tough guy and, and fair but tough. You know, he didn't, you know. He hated anybody sucking up to him or interrupting him or anything like that. So it was like he had to be on guard and respectful and just like watch him and learn, basically. <laughs> and just watching him and Denzel go at it is what you're saying. Just watching uh, them in there. I love that. Right? Yeah, it was really great. It was fun to watch. Sparks were flying. That's for sure. And was it always hot on the set? Cause it, or did, they were just putting perspiration on you in between because it looked pretty uh, damn hot. It was set. sort of warm, but they were mostly, yeah, I mean, Tony Scott seems <laughs> to love that. Ridley Scott, too. Of course. <laughs> He's always sweaty. I'm <laughs> sure. But, uh, yeah, in a submarine, it is actually, you know, it is tends to be very warm. And so that made sense to a degree. I just yeah. figured I'd ask and those the, questions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's very sweaty. Right? I bet. And the... Uh, and this, I guess he was trying to emphasize the, the stress of the situation, the nuclear weapons, and the, you know everything that was going on in that story. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.